In 1998, an 8-4 record had Purdue fans saying, remember the Alamo. In just his second season running the Boilermakers, head coach Joe Tiller had the black and gold back at the Alamo Bowl for a second consecutive season. One year earlier, Purdue had beaten Oklahoma State. And this time, they would be facing the Kansas State Wildcats. Quarterback Drew Brees, the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year, would have his hands full facing the third best defense in the nation. The Wildcats yielded only 10.2 points per game. To add to the Boilermakers' challenge, the Boilers would also have to contend with Heisman Trophy runner-up Michael Bishop and a Kansas State offense averaging over 45 points a game, tops in college football. A lot of pregame hype focused on the snub of Kansas State from a bigger poll. Having been ranked as high as number two heading into the final week of the regular season, Kansas State was unhappy having to accept an Alamo Bowl bid despite an 11-1 record and a number four national ranking. The Purdue faithful back in West Lafayette saw the matchup against the heavily favored Wildcats as an opportunity to show the college football world that the Boilers were a program worthy of national respect. As Tiller had said coming in, you know, anybody can have a winning season. He was at Purdue to try to establish a winning program. And this was a very important second year because this was the second straight winning season that Tiller had, had managed to get at Purdue uh, and basically with uh, Jim Coletto's players. So this was a big step in establishing the fact that Purdue was not a one or two year wonder. It was going to be a program that you had to reckon with. Purdue came in unranked and of course Kansas State was uh, till they lost to Texas A&M in that double overtime game in the Big 12 championship. They were they were in line to play in the national championship game and it still came into the Alamo Bowl ranked uh, number four and uh, I think most people figured it was going to be kind of one-sided in Kansas State's favor. We just thought what a great opportunity for us to be able to play one of these teams that is considered elite, one of the best of the best. You know that was a category we were trying to put ourselves in and in order to do that you got to be able to go and play those guys and beat them. The two deep men for the Purdue Boilermakers. K-State won the toss, they deferred, and this one is underway. Gets by Klopp and it goes into the end zone. And so the Boilermakers will scrimmage from their 20-yard line. Well, I think he would have to be. First play from scrimmage, Breeze sets up at a shotgun. They fake the run, Breeze to throw, and he is low and away. Gabe Cox, the intended receiver. Second down and 10. Puts touch on this one, and the ball is dropped by Isaac Jones. Right in the hands. Coverage was good, but he was there. The pass was there. Breeze under pressure. Gets it away. Has it complete, and that is Chris Daniels for the first down. You could see that Breeze bought himself extra time with his mobility. Good for 13 yards, and it was Chapman who was coming after him. And, and that's what Bill Snyder was talking about. He frustrates defensive linemen and secondary. They brought both safeties on a blitz. Proctor and Lamar Chapman, but he bought some time and got the ball out to Chris Daniels. But all three of the key line Linebackers for Kansas State were on the sideline. Crabtree again the lone setback as Breeze goes under center. Gonna have to hurry as linebackers pinch in. Gets it away. Got it complete at the 39-yard line. What a stick. Semino comes up to make the hit on Chris Daniels, but it's still a gain. Daniels comes off the field for a moment after that uh, stick by Semino. Try to get the cobwebs free of him. Two of four, 19 yards. Drew Brees. They go with the running play. Not much there as Crabtree spins around. Maybe a gain of one, but I don't believe so. Where the linesman has come in, and again, they're going to play with a third down and more than five yards to get the first. Yeah, and Drew Brees has had an excellent year, 336 of 516 pass attempts, 36 touchdowns, 3,753 yards, and in in kind of the changing of the guard in the Big Ten Conference. 
Well, a lot of people offense. told Joe that he couldn't come in there and play this kind of this kind of offense. No backs, full wide receivers, but they've made it work. And here we go, empty backfield. Just breathes. Steps up, got that incomplete and a close to pass interference on Chapman. No flag on the play, and it'll be punting time. Now the punting situation, and, and this is dangerous anytime it happens because punt returns and kick returns of all kinds as it is blocked by K-State. Picked up by the Wildcats and inside the 15-yard line is McGraw, and there was a flag down at the sideline. Now, Ron, I like the strategy by Bill Snyder because you want your ball club in this thing. Offside, it's gonna, it's gonna come Kansas back. State. But I like the idea of forcing the action. They did it on defense, a lot of man coverage. They do it on the first punt by going after it, and he's trying to stir his football team up right now. Claiborne is a man who came through and got it. Yeah, Chris Claiborne uh, came through and uh, was not touched. Now, you plant that seed in the punter's mind. It doesn't matter if this is coming back. But the point is the kick returners by Kansas State are as good as anybody in the nation. Now, interestingly enough, Chapman is the man who was back that time. But David Allen is the nation's leader, and he's being punished. He's not returning kicks tonight because of some kind of violation during this week. We were not told what. First down, uh, Purdue. So the Boilers come back to the line of scrimmage. Niedrich over the football, a junior out of LaGrange, Georgia. And it's a quick screen out of the flat. And look at the quickness of the defense. Isaac Jones makes the catch. And Cooper comes up pell-mell and knocks him down for a loss. So that means that only two of the linebackers are in. As you look at Venables, he is also part of that defensive coordinator positioning. And look at the run by Breeze. Going to take it up to the 50-yard line. Seminole really put a lick on him. But Drew is going to have a gain of 11 yards. You see the numbers, and they're incredible. Big 10 passing records galore this year. And keep in mind, he's only a sophomore. Pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Big number 77, Damian McIntosh. He's the man who got up and knocked it down. As we mentioned, normally David Allen would be back there, the speedster from Liberty, Missouri. But uh, he is not doing it here in the early part of the ball game. Don't know if he's going to be punished for the entire game or not. Because his punt is going to hit at the one and go into the end zone. Coming up on the Big Ten's greatest games, Purdue would get its first look at quarterback Michael Bishop and the nation's number one scoring offense. Would Roosevelt Colvin and the Boilermaker defense be up to the task to try and stifle the country's most dynamic offense? We'll find out. Running play with Hickson, and he will take it close to the 25-yard line as John Reeves. Play action. He'll try to throw for the first time. Pressure from that defensive front, and here's where he killed it. Most quarterbacks would have been caught for a sack. Fells will finally make the tackle, and he winds up with a gain of four yards. And Colvin is the man who was shaken up. And of all the guys that they really could not afford to lose, is this fellow right here. So we'll keep an eye on the sideline, see the nature of the injury, and how long he has to stay out, uh, if at all. But obviously, they are concerned about something with either his ribs or his left arm. Chuki Wakori, number 49, comes into the lineup for Purdue. Bishop, quarterback keeper, not going to have it. The Boilermakers are there to make the stop, and it's Wakori who just came in the game combining with John Reeves on the stop. And that brings the Purdue faithful up. So it means that James Garcia, who's a senior from Victoria, Texas, stands back to kick, waiting for the snap at the 13. He kicks the ball extremely high. Sutherland is the deep man, and this one's off the side of his foot. And now takes a huge K-State bounce and goes inside the 26-yard line. And that's where they will be scrimmaging for the second time around. 46 yards on the boot. 9.08 to play. 
first quarter. Second possession by Purdue. Crabtree. And there is just not much there as Rowe makes the tackle. And there is a marker down on the near side. Offside against K-State twice now that the defense is going to give up five free ones. Oh, oh. Oh. Nobody in the backfield. Quick pass. Got it across the middle, and that's Jones. He will have it for the Purdue first down, and I believe this is the first time tonight they've been across midfield. In a run, you can see this matchup's going to be all night. Isaac Jones, who they'll shift out of the backfield, and they get him against the safety, Lamar Chapman. Now that's the matchup that Purdue looks like they've struck on early in this ball game. We talked about the linebackers. The reason the linebackers can't play in this game is because Purdue's empty sets which means a lot of wide receivers and you get mismatches with linebackers now they got a Lamar Chapman Isaac Jones matchup that they like so that means also as you see the four wide receivers two safeties out covering as quarterbacks normally would a little stop and go and his move was nice and breeze was off in the throw to Chris Daniels you talk about the style of play Joe Tiller has brought to Purdue and he's given headaches to defensive coordinators in the Big Ten I had to laugh at Joe in our meeting yesterday, but I said, how surprised were you? He said, we, we were shocked. So we watched the game, and we thought we would play A&M or maybe Texas or Missouri, but not K-State. Quick throw out in the flat, and they get the quick screen, and this is Jones, and he will take it inside the 45 to the 43. Travis Oaks comes over to make the tackle, and Cooper, with the headgear off, is joined. They are one of three in third down conversions tonight, and uh, the ball was never snapped on time. As well, prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yards, still third down. Players just need to get used to running the routes again and making the catches. Third down, and they still have to take it just inside the 39. Empty backfield again. Breeze steps up. Going to be caught. Sacked by Darren Howard. First punt tonight was blocked, but Kansas State was offside, and they should have blocked another one, and he ran right by the punter. Fielded at the 13. And the tackle made at the 20-yard line. Coming up, with the offense stuck in neutral, Purdue would look to its blue-collar defense to apply pressure to the high-powered Wildcat offense. series for the Wildcats. Going to go up on top. Got a man there, and it is just beyond Aaron Lockett's fingertips. Second down of 10. 5.59 left to play. They're going to have to hurry. Three seconds down to two. Movement all over the place. You can see on the right side as it is thrown complete, and they're still blowing whistles. So it's second and 15. Now they are, see, they're butted up to the Purdue end of the field, and that's the reason the players are having to come up and ask him personally what the call is. Draw play. Hickson breaks a tackle. Has five, and who is he attacked from behind by Colvin as Austin made the tackle from down low, and then Colvin got him top shot. Third down. Line to make is the 31. They fake the draw. Pressure is on, and he's sacked this time by O'Keefer. <laughs> and something that K-State has not had to contend with that much this year. Well, they have a concern because both these defensive ends, Coleman and Cheeky O'Keefer, are very quick. O'Keefer was an outside linebacker. They moved him in summer camp to defensive end. He sat out last season. And shows you his quickness getting around the corner. Well, there's got to be a confidence builder for the Boilermakers as we're about to hit 440 left in this opening quarter. Second punt of the night by Kansas State as Garcia stands about two yards deep in his own end zone. Wobbly spiral. 
Another mistake. Yeah. Let, that ball hit. Let that ball hit on this hard AstroTurf, and they're going to wind up with an extra 15, almost 20 yards out of it. A Sutherland elected not to come up and make the catch. It's 53 yards on the punt. It was different guys at different times that definitely made the, the ending outcome you know that much more sweeter because it wasn't like there was one particular guy that did everything we had a guy here a guy there a guy here a guy there and i think in the end you know collectively as a team you know we can sit there and say that was a true team effort to win the game i was having trouble getting out of bed in the morning because my been a load to handle inside. But what's happened is Garcia has not hit the ball well. No, he hasn't. And, and he shorted it, and it's hit the turf, and he's really gained 15 extra yards with the bounce, so they may move Sutherland up a little bit. Second down at about 13 and a half yards. Blitz, flag is down, and Breeze is going to be tackled in the open field by Howard. I think it's on David Cohen. The mistake that Mike Gottfried pointed out, not fielding the punt in the air, cost him an extra 20, a penalty, and a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. And now K-State is in a position to get something going. And Allen is bouncing around, and that's a scary thing if you're the visiting coach <laughs> looking at him bouncing. Well, they've got the return on a very high, good coverage kick. Allen will return it for the 23. And here he goes. 35, 40. You see why he leads the nation. They're going to wind up with a gain of only 13 yards. He been 41 on the kick, 26 on the return. And his mini suspension is over, but you can just see him out there. He was just bouncing around. He was just waiting to get his hands on this football. And when the def uh, the offensive players now, the blockers know that Allen's back there, they block harder because they know he's going to break one. He has the ability to get great field position for his football team. That was the putter who made the tackle. So Bishop with the best start for Kansas State. The ball just outside the 45 of Purdue. They give it to the fullback and Goolsby will power his way for about three and a half yards. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Ron, I have the man that Joe Tiller simply calls his best player. Number 59, Roosevelt Colvin. Entered that left shoulder in the first defensive series through a combination of contact with Ryan Young, the big offensive tackle for Kansas State. And what's called a rip technique run, where you rip up your arm in a pass rush situation, sprained left shoulder. He's playing with an extra brace, which is going to affect and hinder his pass rush ability. Quick pass intercepted by Purdue, and that's Justin. And Justin will take it to the 30-yard line. Bishop makes the tackle. Michael Bishop's only thrown four interceptions this year, Ron. He didn't see Billy Gustin. Number five, who's got two interceptions this year. He's going to break on the ball right in, in front of the out and make this interception. And Michael Bishops becomes a defensive back to make this tackle. Well, that is great anticipation on the part of Gustin, who just moved right in front. He read him all the way. It looked as though he's watched a lot of video of Michael Bishop. He read the eyes. Coming up. Michael Bishop's interception gives Drew Brees and the Purdue offense great field position. Would the Boilermakers capitalize on the rare Bishop mistake? That bird seat right now as far as momentum. See if they can take advantage of it. Blitz off the corner. Pass right back in that direction through it short, and Lane has to go to the AstroTurf to make the catch. 
it's a concern and Bill Snyder knows right now his ball club is not with it in this ball game. Purdue has thrown six of their seven first down plays tonight. That's been the pattern. Again from the shotgun. Lost this one for the end zone. Got a man just beyond the fingertips of Isaac Jones. And boy, Breeze is looking up at the ceiling right now thinking, count six, count six, because I just missed one. It is third down. They need to take it to the K-State 20-yard line. One of five on third down conversions, and I'm not sure they got the playoff. Nope, there comes the flag. The receiver had been bumped out of bounds, Gabe Cox. Dead ball, cross to the snap, delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. So it continues to be third down. Bolemaker fans trying to get them going. Empty backfield again from the shotgun. Breeze is sacked by Semino. Second time that they've gotten to him tonight. But they've also brought a corner card to number 35, giving a lot of different looks to Drew Brees. Fourth punt of the night by Purdue, and we're still in the first quarter with 45 seconds and counting left in his first 15 minutes. David Allen, the deep man, coming after him again. Very high kick off to the left side. Allen calls for his team, and look at this K-State bounce. Good heavens, it comes all the way back to the 35 and then goes dead at the 33. That's a seven-yard kick. Well, you, you made the statement that to, they, they don't need to help Kansas State. And Joe Tiller trying to pooch kick right there, just hit the AstroTurf wrong. Seven yards is the net. Option play back into the open side of the field. Hickson gets a block, 45, and he's out to the 47-yard line. And that is far and away the longest running play by either team, particularly by K-State tonight. You know, it didn't look like a lot, but number 80, Darnell McDonald, had his guy occupied as well, which allowed another five yards in the play. First down, Wildcats. Off the shotgun. Here's Murphy. Loses the football. It is picked up by Purdue. Reeves. And Reeves will take it back inside the 35-yard line. Willie fills with a nice hit. Linebacker on Frank Murphy. And again, Ron, two timeouts in the first quarter. Uh, an interception, four penalties, and now a fumble. Again, it, it, I don't think they're seeing a Kansas State team that's focused like they have been all year. And Purdue needs to take advantage of these opportunities. I started to say, <laughs> you're only going to get so many easy at bats or easier against this team. Here comes Murphy. A good hit by the linebacker, Willie Fels. In the backfield with Drew Brees. They snap it from the 33. Drew steps up, knocked down at the line of scrimmage twice. McIntosh has knocked the ball down. Talk all you want to. Coaches can try to get you to go, and the, the fans are trying their best, but it looks like a ball club that not, is, is not focusing. Breeze off the mark on Adlin, and maybe for good reason, because there was good coverage on Cox. And maybe three and maybe four. Drew Brees started off four of eight. He is now two of his last seven. That's Cox in motion. Coming back to the lower part of your screen. Quarterback draw. 5, 10. Boy, does he take a shot from Cooper. And also, 42 Semino comes up to make the hit on him. Stats after uh, first quarter. And when you look at Purdue, only 39 passing yards. And Kansas State, nothing in the air. The two turnovers big. How about this? Time of possession, 4.57 K-State. 10.03 for the Boilermakers. Wow. Breeze blitz coming right up the middle. They roll the pocket. Can he get it away? Yes, got a man open. His tight end at Stratton. And he steps out of bounds at the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal, Purdue. Seminole was really coming out after it. Here's another offside penalty against Kansas State. So that's going to benefit Purdue again as the ball's moved to the five-yard line. So first down and goal now from five yards away. Six of 17 for Breeze. Now when can you think of three offside penalties in a, in a quarter and uh, about eight 
seconds. Now they're moving into the K-State end of the field. That's the reason Breeze is having to come up. Blitz right up the middle. Looking, delivers, touchdown, and he's got Chris Daniels. Keith Black and then comes back and runs a curl. Extra point attempt. That's Travis Dorich, and he knocks it home. Coming up next, having drawn first blood, Purdue's confidence was soaring. How would Kansas State respond after Breeze put the Boilers on the board first? We felt like with our offense, if we just kept plugging away, you know, and uh, you know, just kind of break the seal, just get that first touchdown, and then you know, maybe it would kind of overflow from there and. Um, you know, getting that first touchdown to Chris Daniels was, you know, a big play in the game just to, you know, kind of take the lead and, and get the ball rolling on our end. Yards deep, and his teammates say, nope, let's don't try to return this one. So Kansas State will go from their own 20-yard line and now trailing by a touchdown, 7-0. Pressure from the backside, and he is going to be sacked again by Colvin. Ball came loose, but the officials say no. He was down at the 10-yard line. Well, Rose, they say down, but it is Purdue's football, Mike. They have awarded it. They have awarded it to Purdue. Well, Roosevelt Colvin came off the corner. He's from Broad Ripple High School in Indianapolis. Then compared to former Purdue and 49er, Keena Turner from the outside. Michael Bishop arguing the point, but number 59, Roosevelt Colvin, they're blocking him with two players. That's Justin a, Swift, the tight end, stayed in on him. And that's a great call. You could see the ball coming out. Watch it right here. It is coming out there. He clearly yeah, he took it out. He took it away from him. What an opportunity for the Boilermakers. First down just outside the 10-yard line. Breeze drills it. Incomplete. That was Isaac Jones, the man he was looking for. But Jones has had hit him right in the hands tonight. Well, he hadn't missed many during the year. 72 receptions. Quarterback draw. And Breeze spins off at the two-yard line or make it the three. And it will be a third down and goal as McGraw finally got it. Third down and two for the Boilermakers. Going to have to hurry. One second. They just got it off. Breeze's pass. And dropped this time by Daniels. Ron, I'm not sure they got it off in time. And they'll get that third down back. Third down and seven. Pumps it. Now delivers and knocked away an incomplete. Trying to go to Randall Lane. Boy, he had some heat on that one. Yeah, almost too close to put the zip on that he did. But it looked like Randall Lane had a chance to catch that football. You know, you go back to the delay of game penalty, and you wonder at this part of the season, but there's so many checkoffs at the line of scrimmage. You take so much time and look for matchups that sometimes you get caught on delay of games. Travis Dortch, 13 of 19 this year. It's a 25-yard attempt. High pass. They get it down, and the kick, he squeezes it in on that left side. You're looking at Michael Bishop on the sideline. Here comes the kick. Last one by Bunton was in the end zone. This one is returnable, and this is Murphy at the goal line. He is a 4-2-2 sprinter. And he ran into his own blocker and is going to be stopped just short of the 30-yard line. That was Bell who made the tackle 28 yards on the return. I thought on the last series of the first quarter when they ran uh, the speed option back into uh, this side of the field just before the fumble that they looked as though they were getting a little bit more in sync, but then they turned it over. Bishop going to take the ball for maybe a gain of one. Mitrion is there to make the tackle and then helps him up. That's the 
Short drop. It's a quarterback draw. This is a design play. As you'll take it out of the 35, you could see he was right behind that big guard that they pulled. Yeah, and you can see now, right now, that Phil Snyder is going to try to get Michael Bishop involved in this football game. Here comes the pressure from the outside, and they throw the screen to Hickson, and that is a nice recovery defensively. Mitrion is there, and also Felds. You could see him coming over the top, and I'm not sure he got the first down. Clock runs as we're about to go under 11 minutes left in his opening half. Again, the ball is not long, but this one is fielded and a tackle made immediately on Sutherland. But that one, he didn't let hit the turf and bounce, and as a result, it's only 37 yards. Well, look at this field position average. This is one of the worst for Purdue. They stretch it. Chapman tries to bounce it outside, and that's the longest gainer by the running back tonight. This Crabtree will take it out close to the 35-yard line. You look at this Purdue football team, it's a young offensive football team. They only have one senior starter, so uh, next year ought to be a big year for this Purdue offensive unit. But that entire offensive line, Mike, actually only one of the reserves. Wheel is a senior. Everybody else an underclassman. From a shotgun. Gets it away and right through the hands of Gabe Cox. Travis Oaks, the middle linebacker, number 50, with pressure on Drew Brees. Didn't give him a chance to get this football. Had to get it away very quickly. But again, it looked like a football that was catchable. Like it went right through his hands. You know, the other thing, when you watch Purdue run uh, offensive line-wise, they do a lot of cut blocking at the line of scrimmage. The defensive linemen get chopped around their knees, and they don't like that. And by about the third or fourth quarter, you don't get much of a pass rush because guys are worrying about their knees for the beach. <laughs> they get a little frustrated. You're right. Breeze steps up, buys some time, and uh, just throws that one into the turf. It was very good coverage by Carter on Randall Lane. And, and you know, I want to go back to what you said. You know, one guy that could change this game around quick is Allen. And he's got to crowd again. He comes in with a bounce. I but like those. I like his hold, style. Holding his hands up saying, cheer for me because I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I lead the nation, and let me show you how. <laughs> I like his style. Four punts in the first quarter. That's an Alamo Bowl record by Purdue. See if they come after him. They've been getting folks free in the middle, K-State. And the ball goes through his hands. Good heavens, what else can happen? Picked up by K-State and dropped. They battle for it at the one and recovered. Nope, still not recovered. At the one-foot line. That may be the play that wakes up Kansas State. Kansas State, the ball recovered by Lorzell. High snap, went through right through the hands. And Kansas State bouncing the ball around, trying to, you always tell your players, just try to scoop it in the end zone. But it is K-State's football, and they are about 18 inches away. Quarterback sneak. No signal, and there was a flag down on the near side as Fells is underneath that whole stack someplace. And usually that's off sides where that was thrown. Let's we'll see if we're... Uh... Yes. By alignment, off side. Right over the nose, right over the center. I think Nugent, 82, yep. is the man who jumped in there. So now they moved it to about nine inches away. Allen in the backfield along with Goolsby. Going to throw the fade, but the corner... Touchdown, McDonald. Well, 
the, the punting game has been close to disastrous for Purdue all night, and finally it crumbled on him and cost him the first score of the night. Yeah, it really did, and Darnell McDonald used his 6-3 frame on this fade route and uh, caught the touchdown pass. He had 75 receptions during the year for nine touchdowns at another one. Martin Gramatica to attempt the extra point. And he got it. Coming up on the Big Ten's greatest game. After struggling early in the game, a Boilermaker special teams blunder allowed Kansas State to score. Would the momentum be swung back to the heavily favored Wildcats? We weren't going to back down from the challenge. Um, we were college kids, so any college kid, you think you're the toughest, you think you're the baddest. It doesn't matter what program or where you're at. The challenge was going to be really on us to, to sort of throttle down that high-powered offense. Clapton, he's free. Clapton is finally going to be tackled at the 49-yard line by Butler. Yeah, the Butler did it, but uh, Clopton setting up good field position for Drew Brees. Just hits this middle return, just gets some good blocks, got a little wiggle to him. Then Butler makes the tackle, but uh, Purdue sets up shop in good, good field position. Well, that's a great return. The interesting thing in watching that, to show you the kind of speed Butler has, he's still had it on cruise. He had not hit passing gear yet and still ran him down. But great field position for Drew Brees and Purdue. Quick pass, and it's that slip screen again, and Jones going to be stopped at around the 45-yard line. Well, ni nice block by Randall Lane, the inside receiver. When you throw that bubble screen, your receiver's got to get on the outside right now and make a block. Watch number 84 right here with, with this good block that sets up Isaac Jones to break right behind him for good yards. And, of course, the reason you can block downfield, as you know the rule in the colleges, as long as it's thrown behind the line of scrimmage, that is perfectly all right. That one hit at the line of scrimmage. It tipped by Beisel. Monty Beisel tipped it at the line of scrimmage, and that's three times that we will not know if Drew Brees was on the money or not because the ball is knocked down. McIntosh has two. Yeah, all defensive line coaches, Mo Lattimore, talked all week about get your hands up the line of scrimmage even if you're getting blocked and a lot of times we talked about this Purdue's offensive line blocks low they'll take they'll go and the block low and so you're you, they're trying to bring the hands down of the defensive linemen nine of 23 62 yards in the touchdown for Drew Brees Third down, and they need to take it to the 40-and-a-half-yard line. Option play. Breeze keeps it. Going to have the first down. McIntosh will finally make the tackle on him. Well, the reason the running game, and there's a flag down, but the reason the running game's working so well is uh, Kansas State's forced to take some of their linebackers out against these sets of Purdue's. And the draw play and the option play now have worked well for Drew Brees. I think too many men on the field for yeah. Kansas State. Yep, sure was. There's Jeff Kelly, and there's the linebacker. Three linebacker set, which Kansas State plays with all the time. They've only been able four times to have the three linebackers on the field. Two linebacker set, which is going to be the majority of the time. They've had 17 times. One linebacker set, that's nine times, which means two linebackers are standing over there. And they're not only losing their ability, Ron, they're inspirational leaders when they're on the field. So a problem for Kansas State tonight matching up. Well, they're still substituting here, and they're going to have to get somebody off the field. Don't they have 12 out yeah, there? Yeah, they right? got 12 again. Yep, they do, and they're running at the last minute. Uh, Proctor trying to get him off the field. This uh, Purdue offense 
is beginning to do just what they wanted to do against K-State, and that is have them confused. Ball is hit. Was it a forward pass? An incomplete forward pass. Arm was going forward. It was Joe Bob Clements who hit him. And, Ron, we've talked all year about walk-ons. Joe Bob Clements was a walk-on, came to Kansas State as a tight end, earned a scholarship before the 96th season. And Joe Bob Clements had a big ball game in the Nebraska game, had nine tackles in the big win. Mike Stoops, defensive coordinator, talking to the field, trying to get lined up. Looks red hair is going to go to gray here tonight. <laughs> Here comes the blitz again. Got a man and caught at the five and touchdown Jones. And I think you gotta say can hats off to Light, Cohen, Niedrich. Kobe and Gorin, the offensive line, because they gave him time to put up a touch pass. You know, Isaac Jones has caught five touchdowns, make it six. He played quarterback in high school. He understands the passing game. Dorsch with the extra point. And I think that is a huge answer by Purdue to come right back after they had handed a gift Button with the kick. It's returnable. Kicks it to the right side. And this is going to be David Allen. Ooh, you could hear the contact up here as he is belted down around the 22-yard line. Willie Burrows, a senior out of Punta Gorda, Florida, is there to make the tackle for the Purdue Boilermakers. Bishop deep in the pocket. Flag comes down. It is tipped and incomplete, and that's going to be offensive holding. And I'll tell you what, Colvin has just given them fits. Yeah, they are really having trouble handling him, and that time looks like the big fella's going to be called. Well, Justin Swift, the tight end, they're keeping him in on the backside to help the tackle on Roosevelt Colvin, and now also on the other side. You got Chico. O'Keefer, that's putting on a good rush. But you remember what uh, Brock Spack, the defensive coordinator, told us. He said everybody likes to use the term, but he said Roosevelt Colvin's is big time. He can play on the next level easily. Well, there's no doubt, and here you're going to see that they have so much respect for him. They keep the tight end in and the tackle. Number 76, Ryan Young, but he can't get to Colvin. Hard to tell. That could be a share on the hold. Yeah. Both did. Bishop rolls the pocket. Way too high and almost intercepted. The closest person to it was Beasley. Lock at the intended receiver. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Ron Roosevelt Colvin is playing 20 pounds heavier than he was a year ago today. He said, first of all, that has helped him stop the run. Secondly, in his pass rush, and remember now, he is playing with that sprained left shoulder, which is a huge disadvantage against the double team from the right side of that defensive line. Give me a little secret on how to beat the double team. He lowers that inside shoulder, Ron, and against a big man like Ryan Young, he can't get as low as uh, Roosevelt does. That's his advantage now. Well, remember, you see him holding up the hands. A holding in the end zone would be a safety. I don't know if that's what he's signaling or not. Quick shovel pass. Back into the middle. Good heavens, what a hit on David Allen. Oh, my goodness. Willie Burroughs came up and just picked him up and slammed him to the artificial turf. Just watching Kansas State. They're walking around. They're walking in the huddle. Offensively, they just seem to be confused a little bit right now. You know, Ron, when you go on your dream, uh, your bubble gets bursted sometimes. Uh, it's a hard, hard way down. Bill Snyder explained it best. When your investment is so strong, the pain is great. Bishop, and he is going to be sacked by Colvin again. 
I mean, number 59 has done everything, every place of this football field tonight. Oh, what a game he is enjoying. Bill Snyder looking on, and he can't believe it. Again, they keep the tight end just to brush block him, and then Ryan Young picks him up. But good effort to get to Michael Bishop. Benny Sutherland is back deep. Garcia waits for the punt, and Purdue stands an opportunity to have excellent field position. You see the time. Clock runs with six minutes and 50 seconds left until the halftime. Great high coverage kick. Good gracious. All the way back to the 33-yard line. And he's down, tackled after a five-yard return. Drew Brees. Interesting that 50 of his teammates who didn't have family coming gave him their tickets so that he could bring in more friends to come over to San Antonio from Austin. Jerry's been a busy guy tonight. Joe Tiller's team on their last possession came up with another answer to make this ball game a 17 to 7 Purdue lead. But again, a mental error here and they play with the first down and 15. Got it in. It is intercepted by Cooper on a ball that should have been caught and it goes right through the arms of the receiver 84 Randall Lane. Coming up, more of the 1998 Alamo Bowl between the Kansas State Wildcats and the Purdue Boilermakers on the Big Ten's Greatest Games. John Reeves knocks him out of bounds, and that is the play of the night so far. Well, David Allen said, you know, when he's returning punts, I'll make something happen. Now they put him in a tailback, and you're talking about a great run right here by number 32, the sophomore, five foot nine. He gets hit. That's J Gustin who hits his him. balance, gets hit again, and shows you his lower body strength. John Reeves finally knocks him out of bounds. 17 yards. The ball just outside the 20 of Purdue. 6.20 left until halftime. And they said that was that was good. Let's do it again. But this time he gets pummeled by Reeves as he hits him head on at the line of scrimmage. Going to be a gain of about a yard and a half. Kansas State exploring, trying to find a way to run the football against this Purdue defense. Now Allen seems to be the hot guy. He's going off the sideline. But remember, Michael Bishop is, is as good as any running back that Kansas State has. And when they put him in the shotgun like they do now, he doesn't necessarily mean he's going to throw the football. No, it sure doesn't. Well, he got the snap as he was coming up be, uh, to take the ball from under center. Ron, again, a lack of concentration because Michael Bishop, he's talking to That's Randall Cummins, Cummins yeah. right now. He's saying... I was coming back up. I was going to go up under center, and you snapped the ball. See, he's going to take the snap under center. But they are Randall so lucky Cummins, to still have the football. Oh, no, very fortunate. Randall Cummins just uh, again. You 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 think of the focus of this ball club. So it is third down, and they need to take it inside the 11-yard line. Just uh, a mirage of, of mistakes. Did they get it away? I think so. Swings the pass. Almost intercepted. And Bell was thinking six points. And I'm telling you, there would have been nobody unless Bill Snyder had come on the field to tackle him. Oh, my goodness. Now, Henry Bell was all over that pass. Trying to get the ball to Aaron Lockett, the freshman. So this means that Gramatica will come on and attempt a field goal of in the vicinity of 37 yards. Here's Aaron Lockett, the freshman, and Henry Bell, number 27, <laughs> almost had seven points. Oh, boy. 
54 of 70 field goals in his career. Ball is down, and the ball is blocked. Roosevelt Colvin. Colvin has, right now, if you take the voting, Mike, no one else is uh, close. He's your player of the game. He uses amazing strength here. He broke inside and looked like the tackle and just was able to get his hand on the football. He dipped his shoulder and made a move and blocked his field goal. That's a Purdue record, four blocks. I mean, Colvin is playing like a man among boys in this first half as we have 4.54 left until intermission. Maybe he wants to play for the Denver Broncos because he gave the salute there. <laughs> Crabtree is the setback. Breeze lops it. Intercepted by Kansas State, and that's Carter. Deshard Carter takes it right back. Well, he does a great job of positioning himself in front of Chris Daniels to get that interception on Drew Breeze. Drew Breeze with 17 interceptions during the year. Tries to loft this ball to Chris Daniels, but you see Deshaun Carter just step in front, make that interception, and give his offensive team good field position. And all you can say there, if you're receivers coach, you got to be more physical. You can't let the ball be taken away from you like that. Yeah, just a nice job over there by the secondary player, Carter. From the 46. Bishop drills it. Complete McDonald. Did he make the catch? Uh, Waiting no. for an official to say something. Uh, there's no official around. Now the they're play. saying incomplete. That took as long as the impeachment hearings. <laughs> In the same result, nothing. Just. Well, I'll tell you what, it looked like Darnell McDonald caught that football. Well, Corey came in and really put a, a lick. Well, he had that football. Really put a lick on Bishop as the ball was delivered. And so it's second down and ten. And the people in purple don't like that call. <laughs> Quarterback draw. Tries to get it outside. And... Finally, is going to be stopped at around the 50-yard line. Will Corey again? I guess Will Corey was a starter at defensive end. Had a knee injury, then an ankle. He's a great-looking specimen. We saw him on the sideline the other day as the trainers were wrapping his hands before uh, the Sunday workout. Yeah, and you looked over at him and you pronounced his name, and he pronounced it right back to you to make sure you had it right. Chuki Wakori. 0 for 5 and third down conversions. Bishop's pass got this one complete. Tackle is broken by McDonald, and he will have the Wildcat first down. Now that's an excellent effort that you expect out of your leading receiver. He topped 100 yards in receptions five times this season, but he made a great effort to get that first down. Looked like Wakori made the tackle again. Yeah, Michael Bishop patting the football just doesn't look comfortable. Uh, gets good pressure. Uh, of course, with Roosevelt Colvin on the field, you wouldn't be comfortable. But Darnell McDonald with that football. Well, watch his nice extra effort to get this first down. <laughs> well, it was. It was Wakori is the quick pass. And Austin is there to make the hit on McDonald. Right now, the clock continues to run. 3-14, 3-13. 17-7, Purdue surprising K-State right now. And, Ron, some bad news that uh, occurred. Ron Chismar, former head coach at Canton McKinley Rice. He was an assistant. Temple, Michigan State, died the day after Christmas. So he was a very good football coach, but a great guy and uh, will be missed. Three seconds down to two on the play clock. Gets it away. Puts up the fade route, and it is caught out of bounds by Burnett. 
Nice job by the cornerback as he just kept riding him and helped him get out of bounds. That was Deshaun Austin, I believe, who was out there with him. Yeah, and Deshaun Austin started the first seven games and broke his clavicle against Penn State. He just started practicing for this bowl game, so they felt very fortunate to have him back working against Everett Burnett. In fact, he hasn't practiced until they started working out for the bowl. In no with, contact no, until last week. Until last week. David Allen, the setback, he gets the ball. Weaves by attacker, has five, and counted off at close to 10 yards. It'll be plenty for the first down as he takes it around the 26. Jason Lorzell, a redshirt freshman out of Park Ridge, Illinois, is there to make the tackle. Pressure from the backside, and he's going to be sacked O'Keefer this time. Three times that Bishop has been sacked, and he's looking around saying, hey, I'm not accustomed to being treated this way. Well, Ryan Young has to get off the ball a little bit more because these two, two defensive ends, O'Keefer and Colvin, I mean, they come roaring up the field. And you can see right now, he's got him beat. Ryan Young doesn't get off the ball enough to block O'Keefer. And I, I don't want to keep harping on it, but again, focus. Concentration. Sets deep in the pocket. O'Keefer coming after him again. They pick him up, and Bishop just throws it for the end zone, and it is knocked away by Purdue. Beasley got up and knocked it down. Ron, I'll tell you what was interesting on that play. Brian Goolsby, he's had enough. He says, I've had enough of you ends hitting my quarterback. He took a shot at Tiki O'Keefer and, uh, and blocked him just so that Micah Bishop could get that football off. Here's a big-time blocking fullback. He's 6'2", 250 pounds. Here's number 54, O'Keefer, and there's the block. And look at it. O'Keefer still comes after him. And here's the coverage on Justin Swift. So it's third down. They need to take it all the way to the 16 at a half yard line. 17 to 7, Purdue leads it. 117 to play until halftime. Bishop still padding. Here comes the pressure. Again, it's Wakari. Gets it away. Throws for the end zone, and it is intercepted by Purdue, and that's Beasley. Ron, he had Brian Goosby in the middle of the football field, wide open, asking for the football, and he just didn't deliver it to him. He threw in the coverage, a big mistake. Just didn't get enough on the football. So four turnovers in this first half by Kansas State, and this is Crabtree. Takes it close to the 30-yard line. It's going to be a gain of eight, and there is a flag down. And let's check in with Chris Fowler. Chris? Okay, Chris, interesting, speaking of the Big East, Syracuse taking on Florida down in the Orange Bowl later. Steve Spurrier suspended two of his starters on defense because they broke team rules. And that's a very good defensive team, but you lose your defensive coordinator, a little bit more interruption there, and, you, you know, that, that makes it tough on everybody as far as continuity and, again, focus. Yeah, it really does. And uh, we look, watched a little bit of that Virginia Tech ball game uh, people will serve notice right now. Virginia Tech's a top 10 football team. They return most they're, they're of that football team. Everybody, you're right. They, they may be consistently each year as good or better special teams than any team that you see in the country, yeah, aren't they? They just manhandled Alabama today. Clock is running to 28, now 27, and he will just go down to one knee. Joe Tiller says, let's don't take a chance on handing a gift just before halftime. And the folks wearing the colors of Purdue are standing and cheering as they head to the locker room because at halftime, the Boilermakers, huge underdogs in this ballgame, are going to take a 10-point lead toward the intermission. 
felt like, uh, you know, going into halftime, being up 10, it's probably the best case scenario that we could ever look at. So certainly we were very positive at that point and said, you know, hey, if, if, if we got them right here, you know, we got them where we want them, let's just keep piling it on and, and, uh, and get this victory. Not return it. They were down at halftime to Nebraska and also to Missouri. And obviously they came back and won both. Ryan Young had his hands full in that first half as you look at the run. And that's close to 10 yards by David Allen to open the second half. And they're going to say he is just short of the 30. O'Keefer stopped it. And going back to what Adrian Carson was talking about, I think he's exactly right. If you ever wanted 10 more minutes, you, you want 10 minutes for Kansas State to try to make your adjustments. Uh, Mike Stoops defensively, Bill Snyder to right away to the option, and David Allen's going to be a big part of this offense in the second half. He's been the most consistent, averaging nine yards a carry. He has 36 on four attempts right now. Here he comes again. Has five, has 10, had it off at 15, 16, and now at 19 yards. Austin makes the tackle, and Allen is running and also leading the cheer. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat myself. Well, this drive is so important for Kansas State to get them awake and to get them back in this football game. But this is their signature right here. They need to take this ball down and score a touchdown. They're down 17 to 7, but they have come out really clicking here in the third quarter on this opening possession. Pressure, and he's just going to throw this one away. Whew. One of our uh, Parab operators being helped up there. That's the microphone that's held on the sideline so you can hear the natural sound. And you heard the natural sound as the young man who hopefully is okay got up. Calvin is the man who was putting on the pressure, and he's being asked again, and thank goodness he's all right. It's going to be on uh, Purdue. Well, if you want to know exactly how it sounded, then Billy Gustin reaches down and helps him up. Nice. Nice gesture. <laughs> we want you to have everything real on this network. But not at the expense well, of our young new, people. You're going to have to get a new <laughs> microphone. Big opening again, and Allen inside the 35. Henry Bell made the tackle, and right now, this is the most determined and good-looking drive that K-State has had. Well, K-State needs, needs someone to step forward, and it's got to be David Allen because he brings excitement with him uh, in the kicking game. And you can just tell he wants the football. He wants his hands on the football. Got it again, and this time, nothing doing. Lorzell, Jason Lorzell, the red shirt freshman, comes over to make the hit on him, and there is another flag down. Yeah, they're going to call holding on uh, Kansas State. Well, this has been a very good date for this school to play on. Because on December the 29th, 1993, in the Copper Bowl, they beat Wyoming. In fact, it was Joe Tiller's Wyoming mm -hmm. team, 52 to 17. They beat Colorado State in 95 in the Holiday Bowl, 52 to 21 on the same day. But they scored only seven points in the first half on this December the 29th. First down and 20. Bishop rolls the pocket. Now going to throw back to the other side, and he's got it complete. Nice job in the comeback by McDonald. And they almost pick up all 20 yards. In fact, they may have. Lorzell on the tackle. Nice little adjustment, Ron, because what they did on this play is they rolled Michael Bishop to the right a little bit away from Roosevelt Colvin. So they get him away from the, the defensive end. It's giving him the most problems. Darnell McDonald gets the defensive back. Deshaun Austin turned all around. Close to the first down. Ron, the job Bill Snyder has done at Kansas State is uh, something short of miraculous. Since he's come to this program, they average 13,000 
fans at Kansas State when he first arrived. They have 25,000 here tonight, and you can see the records. My hat's off to the job Bill Snyder and the president, John Leifold, has done. It was a first down, and with the running play, O'Keefer, again, one of those defensive ends, steps up and bites this offense of Kansas State. David Allen will have nothing. In fact, he may have lost a half yard or a yard on the play. Well, we were told by this gentleman right here, Brock Spack yesterday, that the two defensive ends were the two guys that they liked the matchups if they could get. Well, we were told by this gentleman right here, Brock Spack yesterday, that the two defensive ends were the two guys that they liked the matchups if they could get them one on one. And boy, when they've had them one on one, Mike, he has been right on it. They tried to block uh, Roosevelt Colvin with two and haven't been able to. Bishop on the pitch. Good hit by Beasley. You can see those heads snap back. Flag is down, and that time Colvin was coming in on Bishop, and he laid a pretty good lick on him as the pitch came. Like Gooseby again on the outside. I mean, he's a runaway train blocking. Chop. Blocked below the knees. A wide receiver probably coming in from the outside. Can't see it. There's Goolsby's block. May have been on Darnell McDonald, number 80. Eric Hickson comes back into the lineup at tailback. Second down, they got to take it all the way to the 14-yard line. Bishop under pressure. Now he's going to run it. In the open field is tackled by one leg by John Reeves. Roosevelt Colvin again putting backside pressure on the quarterback. But Ron Hudson and Mark Mangino, the offensive coordinators, are going to roll away from Roosevelt Colvin. So they're going to make him come a long way to try to make the play on Michael Bishop. But you talk about a, <laughs> a nice tackle. John Reeves with a nice tackle. Not often that you can make a stop one-on-one -on, -one on a guy like Bishop in the open field. Yeah, and John Reeves is a former quarterback, started uh, five games in 1996 for Purdue through six touchdown passes. Third down. And as we mentioned, they got to take it to the 13-and-a-half yard line to get the first down from the shotgun. Bishop, they roll the pocket back to the open side and throws it complete. Good heavens, what a hit on Lockett. The ball came loose, but I think he was down, and again, there's a flag, well, and this, it's way this, back at the line of scrimmage. And this is a late flag. They really blocked Roosevelt Colvin here. They ran the dash. An eligible receiver downfield for Kansas State. Dash play. Uh, Dash meaning you drop back as a quarterback and then roll one way or the other, and they double teamed Roosevelt Colvin. Watch how they get him pinned right here. So now Michael Bishop's going to get outside of him. Let's see if we can see the lineman downfield. Maybe uh, Martin? Yeah, but that, that's awful late there. I have to question that one, too. Another. Well, Ron, I just watched that replay, and then I, I just don't believe that's a penalty. Bishop sets very deep this time and goes for the end zone, and that ball is going to be knocked down. Coming all the way across field was Todd Stelma. Boy, it, it's really hard to throw a pass that long across field and not have help. <laughs> Plenty of time to come over and either intercept or knock it down. And again, that penalty really sets back Kansas State, keeps them from scoring here. 
Trying to get the ball to Darnell McDonald. Double coverage. You know, I'm a little surprised that Bill might not go for a field goal here because it would be 59 yards, and Gramatica's hit him from 65. But if he misses, he gets good field position up. They kick it for the far sideline. This is a good hanging spiral, and it's going to hit just one yard deep in the end zone. 42 yards in the punt. Here comes the safety blitz, and they throw the play that should work against it, and he couldn't get it back inside as Sutherland made the reception, and with that safety gone, Mike, they might have broken that one for a very long play. Well, what the formation was was three receivers close together, which called a bunch set, and then Vinny Sutherland came in motion. Drew Brees just raised up through the quick screen. You can see all the receivers so close together, and now they all become blockers. Sutherland catches the football. Good blocks downfield. Gabe I mean? Cox with a good block. If he could have cut the thing back inside, it had a chance of adding some real big yardage. Breeze. They want to throw back on the screen, and they do. And Crabtree, there's nothing. Semino, what a nice defensive play as he stays at home and tackles them for a big loss. That's Isaac Jones in motion. Bottom of the screen. Breeze. Quarterback draw. Nothing doing. Better job there by the defensive line. Andre Rowe and Joe Bob Clements. They had a little game going on the defensive line. And that stopped the quarterback draw, Drew Brees. Seventeen to seven if you just joined us. Clock running at eight minutes and thirty-five seconds to play. Third quarter. Purdue, a two touchdown and in some quarters more underdog in this ballgame, up by 10. Breeze, long throw, got it complete, and Daniels will pick up the first down and come out of bounds at the 34. Cooper was there to make the play on him. Cooper shows you his speed from that strong safety position, making that play. Brent Venerables, the linebacker coach, on his way to Oklahoma after this game, having a conversation with his outstanding strong safety. So Danny Rogers prepares to kick it away. David Miller, the nation's leading punt returner, or David Allen, I should say, standing and waiting for the return. High pass over his head. Second one we've had tonight, and K-State had to return on it, and he missed it. And K-State will recover it for a touchdown. All punters, Ron, are taught when the ball goes over your head to scoop it out of the end zone, take the safety. And that's what he tried to do, but he overran it. You do not want to give this ball. The Sandifer, that is the second one. Joe Tiller timing the punter, but the snap goes over his head, and uh, Looks like everything Havoc. breaks down. Havoc winds up. That extra point is no good. Grammatica yanks it and it goes wide left. Next on the Big Ten's greatest game, another bad snap leads to another Kansas State touchdown. Would poor special teams play be the Achilles heel for the Boilermakers' chances at an upset? Time to move on, fellas. Turn the page. You know, what was really interesting is uh, we had a, a center. By the name of Andy Staniford, and I told, uh, I've always said the same thing to every deep snap guy. I said, fellas, no one knows what your name is unless it's a bad snap, and then everybody knows your name. Uh, and he was perfect all year long. And actually, we had a short punter, Danny Rogers. You know, he was a short guy in a snap. The first snap was, was a little high, but, you know, it was certainly one that he was capable of handling. And uh, Danny actually missed it. It was a high snap, but... But guess what? The spotlight went on to the center. Now, the second one, he sailed it to somebody in about the fifth row, so it really didn't matter. 
But, uh, you know, when things happen like that and a guy's been good for you all year long, you know that, you know, this, this isn't the odds of this happening again are slim and none. Clopton. Tell you what, this little guy right here makes things happen in a hurry. And number 20, Chris Daniels, who is a wide receiver, was practicing long snaps a moment ago. We'll look and see if they use him on the next punt. Crabtree, maybe one, is knocked down hard by McIntosh. Well, there's Daniels, and he was rehearsing long snaps on the sideline. Breeze got it complete close to the 40 is Sutherland and that appears to be enough for the first down depends on which foot came down there Cooper pushed him out of bounds that was a very nice throw by Drew Breeze to Vinnie Sutherland against pretty good coverage ball possession offense for Purdue they go downfield uh, a few times during a ball game but Mostly underneath throws. 14 of 31, two interceptions, 117 yards, and two touchdowns for Drew Brees tonight. Sets, now he's going to run, and that won't last very long because they collapse. Kelly is there, Robinson is there. And Jeff Kelly playing a little bit more in the second half. Well, we talked about the linebacker situation with all these different formations that somebody has to sit out. But Jeff Kelly playing a lot more here in the second half, but going off the field again. Now, now this time, both Oaks and Kelly go off. Yeah, Jeff K-State will play with only one of their one linebacker. linebacker. Two on the sideline again. And again, it's not just your best football players, but your inspirational leaders on the sideline. Seminole, the only guy in the lineup at that linebacking spot, throws it complete. That's Jones. And not going to have the first down. It's going to be third and short. Just over a yard for the first down. Breeze. Tripped over his lineman. It got it away and it's intercepted. And that's Chapman. Breeze tripped over his guard and still tried to get it away. That's his third pickoff of the night. It looks like David Cohen, as he was trying to slide, Drew Breeze hit the foot of David Cohen and was falling down and threw the football. And Lamar Chapman had the interception. Mike Stoops, view of this play. And the interception by Chapman. David Allen is the tailback. Goolsby, number 30, the fullback. And they go with the running game. And Allen tries to move the pile, and they push him back after a gain to the 48 of Purdue. O'Keefer grabs him. Drew Brees shakes his head saying yes, and that probably is a yes, sir. I will not try to throw another hero pass like that again because that right there could be enough to put K-State in front of this ball game. They've got great field position. They're starting to feel a little bit better about themselves off offensively. They're starting to run the ball better. Rushing yardage, Purdue. Of course, the sacks come off that, but a minus 42. Bishop, it is a design play, and Lorzell is right there to necktie him after a gain of a couple, and now it's going to be third down, and they still need about four and a half yards for the first. And that's been a problem with Kansas State tonight, third down. They haven't been able to, to be able to move the chains with any kind of consistency. Michael Bishop shows you how good an athlete he was in that last play. Looked like he was shot out of a cannon. Roosevelt Colvin has come into the lineup, and he is lining up at the left defensive end spot. Let's see if they go away from Colvin on the field. There he comes, and Colvin will make the sack. Good heavens. They knew he was there. They put a second man there. O'Keefer helped out, but it's Colvin who gets the sack. He has been unbelievable. He has played very well on both sides, but that error is Michael Bishops. He had time to get the ball off, but good coverage. 
Here is Colvin beating the block again, putting pressure on Michael Bishop. Thomas Barnett having trouble blocking him. Brought the ball down and uh, the sack for Ryan Roosevelt Colvin. So Garcia, who has been far busier tonight than he normally is, stands back to punt. Benny Sutherland, the deep man for Purdue. Five punts for the Wildcats so far this evening. Off the side of his foot, fair catch is called for, and Sutherland makes it a jumping catch at the 19. First and 10. Breeze steps up. Got it complete at the 28. He's being pushed back. It'll be interested to see. Now, they're going to spot Daniels down at the 26. I thought he got hit at the 28. Well, he did. He got hit by Lamar Chapman and knocked back a couple yards. He gave him a bad spot there. Yeah, that he did not get credit for forward progress there. And with their lack of running game because of only having a one back or no back set, uh, they got to do a throwing. I think Joe Tiller's wondering the same thing we're wondering about why the ball is spotted where it is. Yeah, Seminole out of the ball game. Now the two linebackers remain with the extra DB coming in. Under three minutes to play third quarter. Here comes the blitz. Pressure up the middle, and he puts some air under it, and he's got it complete, and that's Sutherland. Now, this is what Purdue wants. They say, you want to play one-on-one -on -one with us. We may not have a bunch of 4-2 guys, but we'll get open if you protect us one-on-one -on -one because you can't do it. That's 29 yards on that play. Well, anytime you jump the receivers, it's going to turn into a fade. There's a couple low blocks. A little pressure by Jeff Kelly. Andre Roll, number 56, gets to the quarterback, but Vinny Sutherland with a good route against Milton Proctor. Sutherland now three catches for 53 yards, and they move the chains. The ball just outside to K-State 45. It's Crabtree in motion. They swing the pass out. Nice job defensively, but he breaks the tackle, and that's Isaac Jones to the 40-yard line. Carter finally stops it. Yeah, Jared Cooper tackled the shoe. Pulled it off of Isaac it. Jones, and that's all he got. <laughs> you know, he's got on the gloves and everything else. He, he's not going to be able to get that shoe tied, so they get another receiver in the ballgame for him. Number 14, Sutherland comes in, and Jones will take a, a little rest here as he reties his shoe. There's a shift now that they shift Vinny Sutherland out and got him against the linebacker. They got exactly what they want with him. And that's who he's looking at. And the ball is tipped and knocked out at the line of scrimmage. McIntosh with his third knocked out of a pass. And Mike Godfrey, you're right. They had him on a slant one-on-one, -on -one and he was open. Well, anytime you get a linebacker against Vinny Sutherland, now usually they'll put the tailback in the backfield. But all of a sudden, now they make a little adjustment and put Vinny Sutherland back at the tailback position and shift him out. Here it is right here. Vinny Sutherland's already out against the linebacker. And they're trying to get him the football. He was open, but McIntosh batted it down. Third down, and they need to take it to the 35 of Kansas State. Breeze got his pass off incomplete at the 34-yard line. Isaac Jones and there was pretty darn good coverage there by K-State. Carter was in the area. Yeah, Deshaun Carter's had a nice ball game. He's been matched up a lot against Isaac Jones. And it, it is going to be Chris Daniels, the wide receiver who is 6'3", 202 pounds, a junior out of Clearwater, Florida, who is coming over the football to make the snap. Very high. Allen runs away from it, and it is down by Purdue at the one-yard line. Vinny Sutherland, he's making the most of his effort tonight. Well, those wide receivers are, are being accounted for. They snap it, and they, they touch it dead. Coming up, Chris Daniels solves the long-snapping problems for Purdue. And a big punt pins Michael Bishop in the Wildcat offense at their own one-yard line. 
Would the Boilermaker defense continue to frustrate the nation's number one offense? Tiller to rest Roosevelt Colvin. A lot of times you'll bring your backup defensive lineman in when you've got the other team down the field inside the 20 25 yard line. Give them a little bit of a rest. This is the worst starting position by K State tonight. Here's where you got to be really careful of Michael Bishop and you can't get lazy on any step. They'll go with the running game and it's going to be Allen who was tackled by Fells close to the five. Michael Bishop took a long time at the line of scrimmage there. What he's doing right now Ron is he's looking he's going up to the line of scrimmage with a formation. He's looking to the sideline for Bill Snyder if he wants to change the play. It's given more of an opportunity to call the play based on what they're in defensively. Well, David Allen is out. Only the fullback Goolsby is there. And Paris, number 87, comes in at wide receiver. Ball is fumbled. It's in the end zone. Touchdown, David Nugget. Nugent. David Nugent with the touchdown. Never got to football. David Nugent, a junior from Collierville, Tennessee, just outside of Memphis, makes the recovery. And Mike Godfrey's right. Brian Goolsby, who doesn't carry that often, just never got connection from Bishop. is good and with 52 seconds left in the third quarter our new score Purdue 24 and Kansas State 13 watch the handoff Michael Bishop almost like flipped it into the hands of Brian Goolsby and he just never had it Mike he also was looking at Wakori. I mean Wakori was almost there to take the handoff for him. Yeah number 49 Chuki Wakori was right in the backfield and you could see the frustration of Bill Snyder well, on the sideline. Bill's only given away one tonight. He, he's got one more to give because Purdue's given two away. <laughs> So Nugent makes the recovery, and of course, that's the dream of any lineman, to recover for a touchdown. And David scores for Purdue and puts his team back up now by 11 points with that miss of the extra point by Gramatica. There's a good look at David. Collierville just to the south of Memphis, Tennessee. Wound up heading to West Lafayette, Indiana to play his college football. And right now is extremely proud. Here comes Button's kickoff. Murphy. Two yards deep, he'll return it. Remember I told you this is the 4-2 sprinter. And he ran right into the man. That's Bell who is there to make the tackle. Bishop's pass. Perez in and out of his hands. Again, that ball was thrown right to Gavin Perez. He should have made that catch. Michael Bishop, that's probably the best pass he's thrown in this ball game. Had a good zip on it. Just uh, an incomplete pass. Deshaun Austin. Mike now, gave you the history on him. He's been hurt. See, Michael Bishop's looking to the sideline now. He's Bill Snyder's making this play call. Play clock is at nine, now at eight. Sets deep, and the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage, and O'Keefer. O'Keefer knocks this one down. Well, the defensive ends, Colvin and O'Keefe, have had big nights. 
And, you know, let's throw Wakari's name in there as yeah. well because Chuchi. I still think he was a big part of that fumble on the handoff just a moment ago. So you're right, all three of them. Yeah, they've had the tackles for Kansas State have had problems all night. By the way, K-State losing those three fumbles tonight. That is an Alamo Bowl record. Bishop's pass intercepted. And it's Gustin again. His second pickoff of the night. First and goal, Purdue. Boy, Billy Gustin read the route of Aaron Lockett. He got right on the hip. He knew they were clearing out on the outside, and he knew Aaron Lockett was going to run an out route. And Billy Gustin got right in front of the throw, as he did in the first half on an interception. He really jumped on both of them, didn't he, Mike? He sat right on this route. Watch. He's gonna, he knows right now that Lockett's going to break outside. He's going to break underneath him. He knows the clear out is on the outside. Just a heady play by the senior defensive back. I said first and goal. They've spotted it just outside the 10. From the shotgun, Breeze incomplete. One more comment about Gustin. You have to think when you see plays made like that, that that is a young man who has to have been in the video room watching tendencies and watching receivers and watching quarterback. Well, he's had two interceptions tonight. He came into the game with two interceptions. He came out of Georgia Military Academy. He studies film, uh, and he knows routes. He read the route on both plays that he intercepted the football. Sixteen seconds left in the third quarter. That pass complete to Jones, but not for very much because he was slung out of bounds at the eight by Carter. And now it's third down. Joe Tiller doesn't want to come away with just three points on this one. No, but that's Kansas State's hope right now. Their defense has to rise to the occasion. Now, Daniels has been effective uh, for Purdue down in this area. Jones now with eight catches. That is an Alamo Bowl record. Third down. They need to take it just inside the one. Incomplete. Stratton, the tight end, was the guy he was looking for. And this is what Kansas State needed at this time. They had to force the field goal. Good defensive play. Bill Sandifer comes in. He was on the extra point a moment ago, and he will snap for this field goal attempt. It's a 26-yard attempt. Dorch is one of one tonight. Good pass. Kick is up, and he squeezes it through. Butler was close for a block, and with four seconds remaining in the third quarter, we'll hold it right here as Purdue extends its lead to 14 points. Again, we talked early about the focus of Kansas State. Ron, they should have been in the bowl alliance. There's no doubt about it. They're not playing well tonight. This is a football team that went through the entire season, beat Nebraska, only had one loss. They should not have been passed up for the bowl alliance. They were. They fell all the way to the Alamo Bowl. Bill Snyder said the Alamo Bowl is our ally. They wanted us. But this ball club just is not in this football game tonight. I'm not taking anything away from Purdue. But this is not the Kansas State team I watched all year. Bowl championship series, of course, is uh, is what Michael is addressing. And it, it, <laughs> it was strange the way this whole thing has come about. But the situation right now, four seconds remaining in the third quarter, 27 to 13. And Bunton to kick off again. And you have to understand, every time you kick it, if you can't get it in the end zone, you're playing with fire because of that number three back there. But this one's far enough. I don't think he'll return it. Well, he's going to. From five yards deep in the end zone, runs into his own man. 
and still takes it out to the 36-yard line. That's 41 yards on the return if you count the five from in the end zone. Nick, a sack, a fumble recovery in the end zone, and an interception highlighted an unrelenting Boilermaker defense that dominated the third quarter. Heading into the final period... get from these numbers well the fact that kansas state can't muster any offense in the six turnovers obviously purdue f with four but the kansas state turnovers has just killed their effort Sixty thousand seven hundred and eighty in attendance tonight that's the second largest in alamo bowl in history fourth largest for football in the alamo dome Bishop sets deep under pressure, and he's sacked by O'Keefer. Five times those defensive ends have gotten to him tonight. I think this is Michael Bishop's fault over here. O'Keefer's being blocked. Now they block him up in the line with Thomas Barnett, and then he just runs over Eric Hickson. So really, Michael Bishop never had a chance again. O'Keefer has three sacks in the ballgame. Once you make my, Michael Bishop pull that football down and reset, O'Keefer's just right after him. Third down, and they have to take it out to the 46-yard line to keep this drive going. Bishop throws very long, and it is caught by Paris. That's one you throw up, Ron. There may have been a little push off on Henry Bell. 53 Paris. yards. Yeah, Paris may have pushed off on Henry Bell. But a high fly throw by Michael Bishop. Let's watch it here. Michael Bishop throwing across his body. And now Paris just did a nice job against Bell. Bell kind of loses his balance. And of all the plays that looked as though it was going for not, that one was one of them, and it winds up as a plus 53. Quarterback draw. And Bishop goes down hard just inside the 10. That's Felds combining with Lorzell on the tackle for Purdue. Michael Bishop running the quarterback draw just follows the blocking of Brian Goolsby. Fells makes the play. He's had a he's had a remarkable ball game also, Ron. I, Willie has, he yeah, has talked about him being a wrestler in high school. He had a three three year record at 99 and two. David Allen had left guard and then he disappears. He takes a pretty good hit. <laughs> by Reeves and also Woody Fells again. Their inability to run the football tonight, Kansas State has, has not been able to muster any kind of attack inside to cause Purdue uh, any kind of problems. Mark Mangino, who you see right here on the right, Ron Hudson, the quarterback coach, done such a great job of Michael Bishop running the football and the quarterback counter and isos and draws. People from all over the country have called about their running game. Timeout called by Kansas State. Bishop with the option play gets a block at the five and they will have the first down as David Allen gets belted out of bounds by John Reeves. And the speed option, and Michael Bishop takes it right to the defensive end, kicks it out. But Brian Goolsby again with another nice block that sets up this first down. Watch number 30 come out of the backfield and make this block for David Allen. Henry Bell. 12 for 80 yards for David Allen tonight. First and goal, Wildcats. Allen again. Right side, touchdown, K-State. 
Brian Hanley with a huge block. And that is the first offensive touchdown in this ball game that K-State has taken the offense and driven it down the field. Without taking it over at the six-inch line or recovering the fumble in the end zone by the defense or special teams. Gramatica to attempt the extra point. Missed his first of the year on that last touchdown. It's a good pass and knocks this one home. And here's the kickoff. Line drive, and it's going to go in and out of the end zone. Adrian Karsten, let's check in with you. Trying to figure out how to stop Drew Brees. Now, hopefully not too late. They think they've got it. If they can force him out of the pocket on this drive, they figure they get the ball back. They can stick it back in the uh, left end zone as you look at the field. But well, the, the, the ironic thing is, the times I've seen them drive Drew Brees out of the pocket is when Simino, Kelly, and Oaks have been in there together, and that has not been very often. Well, I'm looking at the field right now. Adrian Simino and Jeff Kelly just went to the sideline. Oaks is the only linebacker on the field. Breeze puts some air under this one and in and out of the hands of Sutherland. Boy, that was close. Through a nice pass, Cooper had to cover. Yeah, you work on the strong safety again, Jared Cooper. Sutherland, but... Uh, Purdue has dropped some passes this evening. As this game's moved along, Drew Brees has hit his receivers, and the ball has not been able to be uh, brought in. We've got it unofficially. Eight drops with that one right there. Brees lops it too high. And should have been whoa, almost intercepted by Butler. Well, they gave the statistic to us the other day, Ron. Uh, of the 17 interceptions in the regular season, nine were deflections. One by the defense, seven by their own receivers, which we've seen tonight, and one by the turf that should have been an incompletion. And that so, Wisconsin game. Yeah, <laughs> so they said, you know, you, you take away those nine interceptions or nine deflections he would have had eight interceptions for the year and 516 attempts third down they are two of 13 they have missed their last six third down conversions breeze puts air into this one got jones open and he's he dropped the football i don't believe this this young man might have scored good heavens well, make Cox, it nine. Your pardon. Make it nine drops now. Gabe Cox with wow. a sure big play from Drew Brees. My apologies to Isaac Jones. It was Gabe Cox. Well, this ball was thrown perfectly by Drew Brees. Gabe Cox just couldn't bring it in. I Took just, his eyes off of it. Uh, he scores, Mike. So again, Chris Daniels to handle the long snap as Danny Rogers prepares to punt. They're coming after him, and he gets it away. Good driving spiral. They Flag the is kick. down as they rough the kicker, and Allen will be tackled at the 45. Now let's see if it's roughing or running into. 49 yards in a punt, 14 on the return. It's five yards running into the kicker. And I think Kansas State will take this field position. Purdue gets, gets the choice. I'm sorry. And I think they'll kick it again. I think Brandon Clark ran into him. I'm going to run over and tell Joe Tiller, but uh, good field position right now as it sits. Got to kick it again. Yeah, they hope to get a better kick here than they they had on this last play. But you're going to see Kansas State coming after the punt. And 
And they couldn't catch the number. There's so many of them. Well, it's 45. Uh, Brandon Clark, as we said. He is the man who uh, took his legs out from under him, I believe. 11 penalties, 91 yards now against Kansas State. And David Allen, dangerous as again. He's clapping his hands, waiting for this football. Driving spiral, best kick of the night. Allen retreats to the 22. There's a block in the back and a flag, and Allen may score on this, but they, he is, but they're going to have to call it back. Well, he doesn't. He goes down at the 15, but there was a clear block in the back yeah, by K-State at the 30-yard line. It's coming back. May have been havoc. I'll tell you what. The punting game for Purdue tonight has been havoc. <laughs> I mean, this has been amazing. Here, here comes the, the push right there. Number 38. Yep. Well, there are two, There's actually. three of them. Yeah. Could have picked any one. See, there's the first one. Here comes the second one right there. So McGraw was one, but he wasn't the only no, one. No, he was. He could share that honor with several players. Penalties have just killed Kansas State tonight. Now they are scrimmaging with their back in the corner where the Purdue partisans are, and it is very hard for that offensive unit to hear the signals. Kelly, you're going to run it. Or Bishop, I beg your pardon. Well, Corey will make the tackle on him as he brings it up around the 20-yard line. He had an open receiver. He could have thrown the ball to Darnell McDonald on the quick game, and just he was wide open, just tucked it in, and again, you just... I said it from the start, concentration has to last four quarters, and Kansas State's concentration has not been good. Bishop, going to be tackled again. Colvin and Mitrione. You know, Mike, I think they've only played five defensive linemen tonight. They played O'Keefer, Wakori, Colvin, Nugent, who scored a touchdown, and Mitrione, who helped out on the tackle there. I can't remember anybody else. No. You? And they played very well. They have. Michael Bishop uh, will attest to that. Nugent, as we said, the, the lineman's dream. He got a touchdown tonight. O'Keefe, we've got him for eight solo tackles, three sacks on the evening. Pass over the middle. It is tipped and almost intercepted by Lorzell. Tried to go to Darnell McDonald again. But this is a series again. You go back. Now, this started a first play. He had McDonald open. He tucked it in, ran with it. Second play, he ran with a football uh, when they went back to pass. And then the third pass was not very crisp. Again, just not in sync. And Michael Bishop has not played very well this evening. Seventh punt of the night by James Garcia. As we mentioned, James, another youngster from K-State who's back home to play, played his high school football down at Victoria on the coast. Deshaun Austin is back deep for Purdue. Good high coverage kick. This is a dandy. Bear catch is signal for it and made at the 37-yard line of Purdue. Coming up, more of the 1998 Alamo Bowl between the Kansas State Wildcats and the Purdue Boilermakers on the Big Ten's greatest game. Crabtree takes it for short yardage into the middle. That's a Chris Johnson who's down at the bottom of the pile along with Jeff Kelly. And one of the reasons he's in that record book is because their inability to run the football. They, the only chance they got 
of moving the football as uh, Drew Brees throwing it. And Ron, you talk about changing times. I was reading where Bob Greasy in his three-year career threw 28 touchdown passes at Purdue, and Drew has had 36 touchdown passes in the regular season. So you talk about changing times in the Big Ten and at Purdue. Here comes the blitz in the middle, and they give it to Crabtree, and he breaks it. Crabtree will have the first down, and he's still going across midfield. Carter finally stopped a 16-yard game. Well, Jay Crabtree probably knows a lot of these Kansas State players because he played at Coffeyville Junior College in Kansas where he rushed for 24 touchdowns last year. Purdue with success recruiting the junior colleges. First down, they put the ball at the 47. They keep it on the ground again. And Crabtree has five, has 10. Counted off at around 15 yards. Carter will make the tackle. And Coach Stoops, well, again, rocking and reeling in that chair upstairs because he knows that as tough as the offensive output has been tonight, only one touchdown, but the offense really, uh, that if they go down by 14 again, it's going to be a big mountain to climb, Mike. Yeah, and their offense just isn't playing that well. But when you go to a one-back set and spread people all out over the uh, football field, your run support sometimes can get uh, mistakes. And that's what's happening to Kansas State. They go with a third running play in a row. This could be a Purdue record. <laughs> Going well, back to the days of Bob Greasy. No. <laughs> Bob was handed off. Simino makes the tackle. You know, it was interesting in asking Joe, I said, the, the, the nicest flattery that you can have is when somebody starts doing what you're doing. How much around the Big Ten have you seen some of your offense beginning to spring up? And he said, here and there. Is the end to see more one back and no back stuff, but uh, particularly coach, one back. Coaches steal a lot of things off that tape. Crabtree, nine carries, 44 yards now. They fake it to him. Breeze gets his pass away, complete. And they will give him forward progress, enough for the first down to Isaac Jones. Adrian Karsten, what do you got for us? Ron, this offense we're watching by Purdue tonight is certainly not Big Ten style offense. You have 45 attempted passes, 46. This is something that uh, Coach Jim Chaney, the offensive coordinator, says, you know, you don't have to have big studs across the front. We've been with this 12 years and we're still learning. It's an offense born at a high school back in Thousand Oaks, California, for crying out loud. You don't need the big studs. We can finesse a little bit. Sometimes two backs, sometimes no backs. They're going to stick with it and keep on the runs. Yep, you're right. It's Sherman Oaks, I believe, Adrian is where that uh, high school started using it with the, the no-backs. But the Oaks was right. It well, wasn't a, a thousand. Well, you talk about what Adrian is talking about in both these tackles, Matt Light, uh, Jim Coletto signed him as a tight end, so they moved him to tackle. And Brandon Gore in the other tackle played basketball at Muncie Southside in a nationally ranked high school team. So it gives you an idea that their tackles are very athletic to handle speed rushes off the outside. Second down. Breeze sets nicely, gets it complete, and stepping out of bounds is Randall Lane. 6.52 left in the ball game. Carter and Proctor were out there on the cover. This whole Kansas State defensive team is going to have nightmares of this Purdue offense. <laughs> all the formations, all the throws. Well, Bill Snyder said in our meeting, I said, what what do they finally do to you? And he said, they just out formation you, formation you to death. Frustrate you. Breeze. Well, had a receiver running the zig and someone else zagged and Cooper was the closest man to it. I think Cox was the man that he wanted and Cox ran like a toward the post. He yeah, I stayed outside. I think uh, Drew Brees misread that pass. Travis Dorch to attempt the field goal and this one's going to come from 37 yards away from the near hash mark. Travis, a freshman out of Bozeman, Montana, 6'6", 192 pounds, has won from 25 and 26 tonight. Good pass, and this one is right down the Alamo. 
And there's the man, Frank Murphy. And he wants the football, if he can get it. Let's see if it's returnable. Yep, it is. It's in the field of play from the four. Tackled inside the 15 by Stelma. First down from the 13-yard line. Bishop, deep retreat, pumps it. Going long, got a man open. And McDonald makes the catch. Flag goes down, but he will score it easily from 87 yards. Let's call it 88 yards. Billy Gustin tried to run into him to get the pass interference, but Darnell McDonald, with good concentration, brought that pass in for the score. And just like that, Kansas State back in this ballgame. What good concentration by McDonald, Ron, as he made that catch. 1,092 receiving yards this season. Gramatica to attempt the extra point and try to make it a three-point ball game again with 6.23 remaining. And he does. On the Big Ten's greatest games, the Kansas State offense began to resemble the team that led the nation in scoring. With plenty of time left to play, could the Boilermakers hang on or would the Wildcats come back to win? Disgusted with himself, it's one of those things where with. disgusted with himself it's one of those things where with the college rule the heck if he had known just go ahead and tackle him yeah I'm not sure whether he was supposed to be over the top or someone the corner sat down on the play Henry Bell it may have been Henry Bell supposed to continue with the wide receiver Darnell McDonald they're now saying officially 88 yards and that is an Alamo Bowl record by McDonald to pull his team to within three. Clopton two yards deep, and he'll go down on one knee. Well, this is a team they're going to have to be reckoned with next year in the Big Ten. Drew Brees uh, will be a candidate for a lot of awards next year. Kansas State, I still think, and I'm still saying they're the victim, you know, of not being picked up in this bowl alliance, the last loss. BCS, Mike. BCS, and, uh, and I think it's, it's hurt them tonight in this ball game. They're trying to get back in this thing. Crabtree is going to be stopped for about a yard loss. Carter came over from uh, his cornerback position, one of the first men there. Right now, what Joe Tiller wants to see happen is let that clock move, but they're going to have to move the chain several times to get it down where they want it. Yeah, without a doubt now, Purdue needs a couple first downs. 548 left to go in this ball game. Running play again. Crabtree takes a real shot from McGraw. You could see John come up quickly. Cooper was there as well. And now, decision time, third down, and from where they're marking it, it's still going to be about nine yards for the first. 
Ron, and as you look at this play, Purdue will try to find a matchup where they like it the best, and they they tried to have tried unsuccessfully to go against Cooper tonight, number 40. The two of 15 on third down conversions, and they've missed their last eight. Cox makes the catch, and also Jones, I beg your pardon, and Cooper is right there to make the hit on him. They're not booing, it's cool. Well, what happened on that play is a man coverage, and Jared Cooper ran across with Gabe Cox, and he read the screen. Watch number 40, Jared Cooper, as he goes across. Now he reads the screen. Now he breaks up and makes the tackle and forces this punt. Nice, nice play by Cooper. Daniels again, the man to snap. Low pass from center, gets his kick away, and the spiral's not going to turn over. Allen from the 42. That's the reason he leads the nation in kick returns. Danny Rogers, the putter, made the tackle. And that's been the player of the game for Kansas State on offense. He has brought some excitement with him tonight. 35 yards in the kick and 32 on the return. He just bursts here. I mean, he just shows you his speed, flat out cutting ability and working up the football field. Four oh two to play. And K-State can smell momentum going in their direction. Here comes the quarterback draw. Still on his feet. And Bishop will take it close to the first down. Around the 16-yard line. Lorzell makes the tackle on him. Well, Michael Bishop's not used to losing, Ron. He, in his junior college career, in his college career at Kansas State, 46-2. Pretty good odds for your quarterback. Thirty to twenty-seven, Purdue. But that lead is very much in jeopardy right here. They did move the change. It is first down from the Boilermaker sixteen. Hickson breaks by a tackle, breaks by a second one as they try to take the ball away at the eleven. Nugent is down there to make the tackle. You thought that he was going to be dropped at the line of scrimmage. He gains five. Well, John Reeves got in the backfield along with another player for Purdue, but they just couldn't bring him down. As they're playing for the hardware now. Joe Tiller trying to get his defense sparked. Bishop, quarterback draw again. And Gusta neckties him just shy of the five-yard line. Playing with a little more emotion now in this quarter. Michael Bishop, he's like turned it up a notch. These last two quarterback draws, he's running with more authority. You see a nice block by Ryan Young. Now all of a sudden the rush of Purdue is a non-factor because everything's going up inside. And when you look at the difference, 309, the average size of the K-State line to 268 for that defensive front for Purdue, when it comes to a muscle situation such as this, that it's a decided advantage to the Wildcats. Yeah, and you chase Michael Bishop the entire ball game. You've had that long layoff. You tire out a little bit. Michael Bishop on the sideline right now getting the play. Plenty right. of time in the play, Cock. It is a 13, now a 12, now 11. Bishop straight ahead with the quarterback sneak, and they will have the first down just inside the five. Willie Fells, the junior out of Palatka, Florida, who has had a really outstanding game for Purdue. 
makes the tackle. Here's Ron. We're in the huddle. Michael Bishop challenges that offensive line. It's a heavy senior football team on the offense. Four seniors on that offensive line. Now a timeout as the entire Purdue defense is walking toward the sideline, and it is the Boitemakers who call the timeout. Michael Bishop in that last period of time. Purdue led 27 to 13 with four seconds left in the third quarter. Hickson is tackled by O'Keefer. And it's a credit to Bill Snyder and his coaching staff. We talked about the lack of concentration. We expected them not to be at uh, emotional level in this ball game. Yet here they are with 145 left, a chance to win this football game or to take the lead. Second and goal. Hickson met in the backfield as they got penetration. And Willie Fells again. Bishop quickly gets away from the offense, runs to the sideline to get the play rather than take a signal. And a timeout has been called again by Purdue's defense. So here they come to the line of scrimmage. It is third down for the Wildcats. Throws for the end zone. Touchdown, Swift. a flag down and might this celebration I think it's a personal foul on Purdue I beg your pardon I was thinking maybe unsportsmanlike let's see wow what a nice call by Mark Mangino and Ron Hudson and just a beautiful call to Justin Swift. Martin Gramatica with the extra point attempt. Well he got it and it is now flag is down. Let's wait and check that. Sides, Purdue. They'll turn it down. Mm -hmm. Now a field goal won't help you. Got to score a touchdown. Thirty-four to thirty, K State. Coming up on the Big Ten's greatest games. After being held in check throughout the game, Michael Bishop and the Wildcats offense gives head coach Snyder and the Wildcats their first lead of the game. Could Purdue recover with so little time left, or would Kansas State complete the most dramatic comeback? People join Angie's List for all kinds of reasons. I go to Angie's List to gauge whether or not the projects will be done in a timely fashion and within budget. We th I thought we had it right in our, our, our hands, right in our grasp, and it just seemed to have gotten away from us for a second. And um, I think, though, that that was also kind of a, a point where, you know, we said, okay, let's just all bring it, bring it together, focus up, uh, one play at a time, all the way down the field. We've done this before. Um, certainly not against the number four team in the country. We've done this before. Let's go do it again and win this game. But Drew Brees on the sideline looking up at the clock. Got a minute, 24 seconds to work with. Let's see if Gramatica kicks this one, yep, into the base of the end zone. They'll not return it. The drop Ooh. passes. Cox deep over the middle. Yeah. And also, you know, Bell on that interception when he dropped it in the wide open field. But they still have 124 left.
pass is low. That's the 49th pass attempt by Drew Brees looking for Jones. A lot of people still asking the question, how did Drew Brees come out of Austin, Westlake High School, and nobody in Texas or the Big 12 recruit him? As a starter, never lost a football game in high school. But he did have a serious knee injury. I've heard a lot of reasons why he was not taken. But he's still got two more years at Purdue. He's going to do a lot of winning for the Boilermakers. Steps up, gets it away, and that one is too low. The most difficult thing for them next year, he could be not only as good but better, but they lose Iowa and Illinois on their schedule, and they pick up Ohio State and Michigan, and both of those games are on the road. That is not a good swap. No, but they return most of their football team, and they've nationally recruited more uh, since Joe Tiller's been there. They only have four starters from the state of Indiana. So they're all over the country, which goes from his Wyoming days. Two of 16 third down conversions, and they have missed their last nine. Breeze's pass, got it complete, and they'll have the first down. A good effort by Chris Dan. 107 showing on the clock. Now it's whistled back in, 104, now 103. Gets this one complete, that's Randall Lane. Sometimes they have trouble with the, the easier catches, but Randall Lane just snatches one out of the sky for Drew Brees. goodness just beyond Chris Daniels and a flag is down holding yeah. I believe is going to be the call on Lamar Chapman number one because he kind of grabbed out it looked like to slow the receiver down Chris Daniels the intended receiver Lamar Chapman has played well tonight. As we said, Chris Daniels, the receiver, and uh, not much contact, but enough to get that flag. Penalty yards. Well, they have been considerable. Breeze, going to run it, and he's got a lot of running room. Going to take it as far as he can, and he did get out of bounds. Very wisely got what he could when diving out of bounds. Chapman was there, but he is down around the 25, and that's enough for the first down. Here's where Drew Breeze is really good at because he can feel the rush. Jared Cooper, number 40, is going to come from the top of the screen. He feels the pressure, ducks up underneath, and picks up the first down, and then tries to get out of bounds. Lamar yeah. Chapman on the hit. You could see his wide receiver wisely coming off rather than throwing a block and being called for a clip. Breeze lobs it for the end zone. Got him there. Touchdown, Isaac Joe. Can't throw the ball any better than that. Drew Brees <laughs> stuck it right in there to Isaac Jones. What a drive for the Purdue Boilermakers. Extra point is good. 
a three-point game with 30 seconds left. And I mean the K-State bench and their side of the field is sitting in stunned silence. They cannot believe that Drew Brees took that football and went down the field on their defense. That's as good as a pro drive on Sunday for John Elway, Denver comeback. Drew Brees just finds Isaac Jones open. He adjusts to the football, makes that touchdown catch, and puts the Boilermakers ahead. The senior starter on the offense, Isaac Jones. And I think there were probably 10 groans in the Big Ten Conference. That's the other 10 coaches that know this guy's going to be around for two more years, and they got to face it. Well, that, that's, a, that's a great drive. And if they can end this season with the win, as I said before, this is a young football team that will contend for the Big Ten Championship next year. Now, here's the next dilemma. You're not out of the woods yet. You can't kick away to K-State because Murphy has already proven that he can take it the distance. You know, do you line drive? Yeah, you what got, do you do, you Mike? You line drive it right here and... Uh, get good coverage because still a field goal with 30 seconds would tie this thing. Well, if Gramatica's kick his longest is 65 yards. So that means you got to get it around the 48-yard line of Purdue and you're you still got an opportunity. You see his numbers and he is relacing that shoe and there's the kick on the ground and it's bobbled for a moment. Now Murphy trying to find some place to run, and he is going to be hemmed in at the 11-yard line. And the bad thing about it is he wasted about eight seconds off the clock. What well, a nice job there on the kick. A little knuckleball. Willie Fells playing special teams as well. For all the wonderful things that happened offensively on the drive, defensively, Fells, Roosevelt, Colvin, O'Keefer, Wakori. Can't forget Gus. Nugent, two interceptions. Scored, Nugent scored a touchdown. Justin, Justin had two interceptions in the ballgame. This defense. Reeves has played Reeves very well at the linebacker well. spot. Yep. Breeze doesn't want to look on the sideline. <laughs> this would be big for him to come back home. Oh. Bishop back in the end zone, rolling it. Flag has come down way behind the play, and that runs the clock down to 16 seconds. It's got to be a hold. Way back at the five-yard line, this, this marker was thrown. You can see Colvin pointing, say, yeah, let's take it back. So does O'Keefer. I believe they're a hold no O'Keefer. I think Colvin is as good a defensive end as we've seen the entire year. What do you think? He's, he's a good player. Here's the hold right here, a tackle on O'Keefer, uh -huh. and that'll take him all the way back to the Alamo here. Thomas Barnett, the freshman uh, walk-on. Can't lose too much yardage from the five, but uh, you, you lose a little. Colvin, the defensive player of the game, eight tackles, three sacks for 25 yards. And, Ron, before we get off this thing, this Alamo Bowl has been a great sight this whole week with these fans here. It's uh, been very colorful. Mike, our crew's had this game three times. have been here for the final four last year and saw the regionals a year prior to that. This city does a oh. great job for sports events. Excellent. Bishop rolls the pocket throws as he is hit and this was just up in the air for grabs and it is tipped and it is not intercepted seven seconds showing on the clock both Ben Smith and Adrian Beasley were there don't forget Sports Center is coming up next right now it's going to take a miracle for K-State to pull this thing out and Mike the only thing I can liken this situation for K-State to is Arkansas, who had the opportunity up at Tennessee to come away with the biggest upset of the year. They lost that football game, and then the next week they lost again. It's like they couldn't retrieve it. And K-State, much a similar situation as far as they thought they had it regrouped. 
and they're going to wind up losing to this young Purdue football team, it would appear right now. Takes a lot out of you, Ron. You, you lose that goal, and, and plus add to it Purdue, a team that just frustrates you along with the uh, the ball game that they lost. Uh, Drew Brees has had an outstanding ball game. Joe Tiller, his staff, uh, uh, congratulations to them. Uh, to Bill Snyder, I, I don't know of any coaching staff that's done as good a job in the last 10 years. Well, here's that schedule we were talking about uh, for for Purdue. They keep Notre Dame. They got Central Florida, Central Michigan, Northwestern, at Michigan, at Ohio State, and back-to-back -back weekends. Those are the two games they pick up, losing Iowa and Illinois. And they get Michigan State, Penn State at home, and you can see the at Minnesota, the Wisconsin, and open and close it out with uh, Indiana. Zell on the sideline. All the Purdue players asking their backers to stand up and to lend support. The secondary has dropped off 38 and 40 yards downfield just to make sure that no home run ball is thrown on them on what should be the final play of this ball game. Bishop runs up into the pocket. Two seconds down to one. Gets his pass away. And it is going to be intercepted. John Reeves with the interception is knocked out of bounds. And this one is over. And Joe Tiller gets a cool bath. And this is an excited Purdue football team. Again, Ron, you got to credit Purdue. They came to play, and they played, and they made that drive that won the football game. And hats off to both these coaching staffs. They've had great years. So Drew Brees to Isaac Jones, and that was the difference maker as Purdue, a big underdog by over two touchdowns in this ballgame, comes up with the upset, 37-3.